Hello, everyone. Welcome to a five-minute scientific computing talk. You may hear the cloud computing and HPC, which is high-performance computing, here and there. Do you curious about the differences between these two techniques? After several years of elementary works in both of these two areas, the answer about this question is becoming clear. In this video, we try to explain the difference between cloud computing and HPC from several aspects. We mainly consider these differences from the aspects of maintaining and machines, users and associated programs, and how to access it, and typical software stacks. These two areas are still evolving quickly. We just try to share some critical ideas and necessary information here. Generally speaking, the common theme between the cloud computing and HPC is that you try to run your program on multiple machines, such as hundreds and thousands of computers. Obviously, one person or small institutions do not have enough funds and capabilities to construct a cluster that contains a large amount of machines. So, these machines or cluster are usually maintained by specialized institutions. Let's first look at the difference for institutions that maintain the machines or computing nodes used for cloud computing and HPC. The cloud computing service is mainly provided by commercial companies. The left side figure shows the main cloud computing service providers. You may know names of these companies very well, such as Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, etc. In contrast, the right figure shows the main providers of the HPC system in USA. We mainly list the main national laboratories under the DOE, which is the Department of the Energy. These institutions are well known for people with the background of the scientific computing. These government-funded institutions are main force for building the HPC system and play an important role in history. For example, the Oak Ridge and Los Alamos National Lab are two sites involved in Manhattan Project. The difference of the machines also influences the properties of the platform and its serving functions. Let's look at the details of the machines and the services they provided. For the cloud computing, they usually do not show the details such as performance metrics of their cluster. Instead, they are more care about the types of services they provided. The machine with different configurations are created to users as their requirements based on virtualization techniques. Their physical machine pool is also heterogeneous, which is different compared with the HPC system, which is configured by a homogeneous machine in general. The left figure shows the featured products of the Google Cloud service. In addition to the virtual machine, they also provide versatile data management and processing capabilities. For the HPC, there is a rank list called Top 500 List that compares the performance of different HPC systems in different aspects according to various testing programs. This is just like the Olympic game in the HPC world. This rank changes a lot every year. As shown in the right figure, it lists current rank. Currently, the rank 1 system in the list is Fugaku Supercomputer, which is maintained by Rakin. Rakin is Japan's largest comprehensive research institution renowned for high-quality research in a diverse range of scientific disciplines. The second one is Summit System, which is maintained by the Oak Ridge National Lab. Actually, most of these systems are maintained by the national institutions in the world. The Rmax and Rpeak are two important metrics here. A system's Rmax score describes its maximum achieved performance. Basically, it means how many institutions and flawed operations can we execute per second in this machine. And the Rpeak score describes its theoretical peak performance. Another interesting topic is to discuss the users of the cloud computing and HPC. For the cloud computing, it mainly serves for the IT companies. The startup companies may not spend much money to buy their own servers, and they just need to rent the computing nodes from the cloud provider with a comparatively low cost in a more flexible way. The cloud provider has the potential team to maintain these services. Anyone can rent or buy the machine from the cloud computer provider 
if you paid their money. The left figure lists some key information about the customers they serve too. The companies such as retailers, financial companies, may need to rent lots of machines to maintain their user information or provide necessary online service such as login system, website, or the electronic transaction systems that support their business. In contrast, the HPC mainly serve for the domain scientists. They use HPC to solve numerical problems such as scientific simulations. They build model and run the model on HPC in large scale with parallel computing. It is common to use thousands of machines and cores to run a particular simulation. The scientists or research teams in college have the collaboration with the research institutions that own the HPC system. If their research goal overlap with each other, the maintainer will assign a specific core time to a project. Anyway, the goal of HPC is for the research. They are basically the non-profit services. The right figure shows some key projects running on Summit supercomputer. You could say that the main areas are biology, physical, fusion, or nuclear science, or earth science, etc. The style of projects are quite different compared with the cloud computing illustrated by the figure at the left side. In summary, the core value of the cloud computing is to serve the customer's business. Different softwares are built in order to serve this goal. For example, we need the database to store and index the user's information. We need the smart analytics to precise the data as needed. And we need the backend with associated security service to support the website. The main value of the HPC is to serve the domain science. The typical projects include the scientific simulation, data visualization, and data analytics. And we also need some data I.O. service or high-speed high networking service to transfer the data between different stages of the workflow. Let's look at how to excise the cloud computing service and HPC from the user's perspective. For the cloud computing, when we discuss the cloud computing service, they are actually divided into different layers. The first layer is called S, namely the infrastructure as a service. The cloud provider will assign a virtualized computing node to the user, in this case in general. When you rent some nodes in the S level, these nodes belong to you totally, and the node might be virtualized one. You have the root permission to your computing nodes, and you can configure it or debug it as needed. The cloud provider only provides you computing, networking, and storage resource as needed. You need to pay more money if you want to get a more powerful computing node. The second layer is called the path, namely the platform as a service. In this layer, the user just needs to provide configuration files that describe how to run their executable files. And the platform is in charge of the resource scheduling and high availability of the program. The next layer is called the SaaS, namely the software as a service. In this scenario, the user just needs to call the API to interact with the services provided by the cloud computing provider, such as the storage service or the data monitor service. In contrast, common HPC contains login node and compute node. If you can get an account on a particular HPC system, you can log in to the login node. Every user has the same view when they access the HPC. Theoretically speaking, they can use all nodes on this machine. There are some constraints on the total number of the core time, and different partitions may have different running time limitations, of course. Anyway, it is just like a membership. When they give you an account to access this machine, you could share high-quality service they provided, such as a large disk space, high-speed computing node, etc. You need to submit jobs to the scheduler queue, and the scheduler is responsible for assigning the node to every user. They do not use the virtualization techniques since the computing power is abundant and luxury for most of the users, and you do not have the root permission. If you need to install particular softwares that require the root privilege, you may send a ticket to the maintainer for help or consulting any issues regarding the usage. 
you will be charged with the call time only when your job is scheduled to run. The call time is related with your project. When the PI start a project, the call time is fi usually fixed in total. When one project finish, you cannot access the HPC resource anymore. That's why researchers always need to write new proposal and apply for new projects. Only by this way, they can get the available computing resources and fundings from the government to support their research. Different with the 7 times 24 high availability for the cloud computing service, most HPC have the periodical maintenance. You could not access the HPC system when it is offline, and I think it is a definitely a good reason to take some rests sometimes. Let's go through typical softwares quickly. For the management layer, for the cloud computing, since we use the virtualization techniques, we might use Hypervisor or OpenStack for infrastructure as a service, and we also use Docker and container techniques as a management for the program for better isolation, and we might use Kubernetes for platform as a service. For the HPC, we don't use a virtualization service, and we use a Slurm as a scheduler and, and the module uh, the management for uh, environment variables. For the key library layers, there is no clear boundaries between those two areas, but generally speaking, for cloud computing, we use Spark for big data and gRPC for the RPC management layer and a protocol like HTTP, but for HPC, we might use MPI for parallel computing and Luster for file system management and some libraries such as LibFabrics to manage the high-speed networks. And for application layers, there is also no clear boundaries, but for cloud computing, we might use some backend engine to support the front end page of the website or some online services. And uh, the database is also important, but for HPC, we more care about the simulations, analytics, and visualizations. I would like to say that the cloud computing and the HPC share the same genes but different source. For example, they are built based on the CPU and GPU in the file system and data storage service, but serve for different users and different projects. HPC is maintained by National Lab and funded by the government, and the cloud computing is for commercial use. And there are different requirements. HPC aims for provide the high performance computing, and the cloud computing more focus on flexible and the high available services. For users, HPC serve for the scientists, and the cloud computing serve for different people, different startup companies. And so this. This table shows much more details here and basically summarizes this video. One interesting thing is a new trend for the HPC and the cloud computing. For example, the cloud computing provider might need more market share, and the scientists also need more scalability infrastructure, which also provides the high availability. And the HPC community may want to follow the trend of the flexibility and scalability from the cloud computing, from the techniques perspective. So if you look at this figure, it shows that some cloud computing provider also try to set up their own HPC machines and system to provide it to the scientists and to do the simulation and data analytics things, which is traditionally the main tasks for the HPC system. And so I hope you have a good understanding about the difference between the cloud computing and HPC based on this video. Thanks for your watching. If you think this video is interesting, please su subscribe our channel, and see you next time.